flat packed fun to start the year and this time it's a T1 reference. Welcome to Machines and More. This is gonna be a fun one. We'll start the year off with a Ryzen 7000 build tutorial here in the formed T1 reference edition. I've reviewed the T1 sandwich quite a bit. Uh, this one, although it is similar in outside form, in fact, it's completely the same, uh, the inside is completely different because you don't have a riser cable and it uses a traditional layout that many of you will be familiar with. As usual, we'll split the case videos into a few different ones, and we'll start off with the build and uh, tutorial, and then in the following videos, I'll get into the testing results, uh, some review notes, and then uh, we'll also test out some configurations. Th these cases are interesting because you have to assemble it first, so that's why there is a good amount of time that I think would be worthwhile de devoted to uh, putting it together. As is customary for this channel, we'll split the videos for the case into a few different ones. Today, we'll start off with the build, and assembling the case and in the following videos I get into the actual testing results and I'll share some review notes then we'll also test out some airflow configurations as well. So a big thanks to Form for supplying the case for the test belt today. This is a really stunning looking one with the titanium finish on the top, the bottom and the front panels. The main components we'll be using today we're diving into Ryzen 7000 with the 7700X and the ASUS X670E ITX motherboard. And mainly because I needed to use a card that would fit in this case, uh, the two slot gigabyte gaming 3060 Ti OC that I have on hand. It'll work fine for the test drive, but you know, enough talking, let's head over to the overhead cam. And this one is the T1 V2 front panel. It's the same panel. They're actually interchangeable between the reference and the sandwich editions. Uh, but you're just not going to use a lot of the, the threaded holes here. And uh, there's considerably less components for the reference edition, which is nice. It's a little bit quicker to put together. Still very, very good quality uh, with the CNC work here. So we'll set this aside. You will need this pretty much right away. In this compartment over here, this is your power supply cage. It, it does appear to be the same one as the sandwich edition, uh, but it will be mounted differently. And this is going to be the rear panel. Now, this is where things look very different, right? Because instead of a sandwich style layout, you've got the traditional horizontal layout. And so you need the cutouts for the horizontal GPU. And you need the cutout for the motherboard. And this section right here, it does look a bit odd because it's so big, right? And uh, from what I understand, this is to accommodate the C14S. I'm going to do this build with a tower cooler to start, uh, but... You know, just know that uh, because the way that the C14S mounts on some mini ITX motherboards, it may need to stick out the sun, which is why this is here. Okay, so now on to the side panels. You get two, uh, but this one's a little bit different than the sandwich style one. The first thing you'll notice about this modified side panel is that it's got a few differences. First off, you've got a series of counterboard holes. This is where screws go through and to connect to the front panel, the rear panel. Uh, your motherboard standoffs. I've left a couple of these right here. Um, and this might be the first thing you want to install because it's pretty simple. And then you've got a cutout here. This is for your GPU's uh, I.O. hanger. So we'll set this aside. This will be the, the, the main st structural component here because it's the back piece that holds everything together. Well, this is the other side panel. You won't need these until the very end. Uh, but these are the front or top panels. They are identical. And so which side do you put the legs or the little feet on? That's going to be the surface that sits on your desk. The other one's just going to be on the other end. So the, the neat thing about this one is that you can interchange it. So we can put the GPU side on the top. In, in other words, an inverted layout if we want. And that tends to benefit your GPU thermals. But we'll uh, take a more in-depth look at that later on. But you don't need this until the very end. In fact, up until the point where you um, have your build almost done. This will be the last time you put on. It's your power cable. You can mount this at any time you want after the case is put together. Get this power switch. This is the single I.O. component. Uh, front I.O. component if you opt for the basic model. Unlike the T1 Sandwich Edition, you only get one of these braces. Uh, this will go on the front. And this will hold the rad panel, as well as add a little bit of structural integrity to the, to the front side of the case. Lastly, the rad panel. 
So if you're not using this for a uh, radiator, you can still use this for uh, fans. If you want to put a case fan here on the side, if you're using, you know, this side will probably be taken up by uh, an air cooler if you're going that route. And then this will be free for um, case fan. Before we get building, I just wanted to show some of the hardware here because there are a couple things to note. Uh, different ones to deploy. For the most part, the structural components of the case will be connected through that back panel with these pan head screws. These are M3, these countersunk screws. And if there is a countersunk hole drilled, you'll know to use these. You've got this longer countersunk screw here. You really won't need these M3 screws just yet. These are You'll see this is slightly different because it has a rounded head, a thicker profile. These are the standoffs for the motherboard feet for the side, uh, the, the panel you choose for to be your bottom thumb screws. This, will, this is what's going to connect your uh, top and bottom panel to the rest of the case. And this is the one unique component. This is uh, allows you to connect your rad plate uh, or rad panel to the top right corner when you're looking at the case from the from the from the side we can go ahead and start assembling the case the first thing that you might want to do like i mentioned earlier these standoffs so pretty simple you'll notice one two three four we'll just take one of these uh, pan head screws it sits into these counterboard holes and the screw just mates up to it if you have the right socket for these, you can you can use it here to hold the standoff down. Otherwise, not strictly necessary. So you got one, two, three, four, all in. So now we've got that done. This is the way it's gonna face. Your motherboard's gonna be on this side. This is a hole for the power supply. And you'll notice some holes here. So that's what's gonna connect our structural there are front and rear panels so let's go ahead and put those uh, together okay so the rear panel i'm going to make sure that the t1 logo is on the outside that's gonna sit like this see that's gonna the screws will thread into the holes on the side here and again we're just using the counterboard holes and there's two screws, the other one's towards the bottom here. Let's get that in there. So that connects like that. Right. One, two. And let's do the front panel. Okay, you'll notice the front panel has two sides. You want to do the side that has all these holes. Okay, and the two we're going to be using are the two threaded holes. Again, we're going to take two of those low-profile pan head screws. Similar to how we did the back panel. So the front panel is connected. One and two. Starting to look like a case, right? Power supply cage has a few holes. Uh, some of them are used for uh, the other configuration, but we're going to use this one. Okay, and this one. It's going to go right here like that. And we'll screw it in from the other side. Also using those uh, low profile counterboard screws. Place it here. And line it up. See like that. So that's installed. I'd say at this point there's really not that much more left in terms of the structural components. The brace will line up with two holes. This is the rear side one. And this is the front side one. And because there's a countersunk hole cut here, we're gonna be using the countersunk M3 screw here. Power button, and you'll put it through the hole on the side here that looks like that. Okay, and this is gonna to toggle back and forth when you press it. I noticed that this one was a little bit, the heat shrink here was a little bit thick and it seemed to impede with uh, the switch a little bit. You may have to play with it a little bit. There's not too much adjustability. Test it first. That feels okay. Yeah, it should go in and pop back out. 
before you tighten it down all the way. And then test it again. I can definitely feel it you know, touching that heat shrink part, but it's 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 okay. It should look like that. It's a little bit angled funny there. We can put the power cable on right now. Do pay attention. Uh, this cannot go like this. It would be too thick. So it has to go this way. Okay. We're going to use the longer countersunk screw here. So we're going to just thread that through like that. Two screws here. And unlike the sandwich edition, there is no option to inset mount this piece. It wouldn't fit otherwise. We do need to put this piece in for the rad panel. Even if you're not using it, I just I would just mount it. We're gonna also use one of the longer countersunk M3 screws. And that piece will go just like that. You'll see the shape if it mates to the uh, to the piece it is uh, attaching to. And so later on, if we are using the rad panel, the just this is the only point of contact with the front end of the case here. All right, this is gonna be my first Ryzen 7000 build here. We've got a high-end case, so high-end board here. This is the X670E ITX from ASUS. Now this board is pretty chunky. Now for sure, I am gonna try the C14S, but for this first test build, I wanted to try a 92 millimeter tower in this case first. Uh, also, we'll just go ahead and thread the hardware in first. The cooler I'm using here, it's gonna be the SE904XT from ID Cooling. Did test this one a while back. It does lag behind the U9S a little bit, but that cooler is unfortunately just a little bit too tall for the clearance we have here, which uh, is 115 millimeters or so. And the SE904XT is 110. So we should have a little bit of room to spare also. But we'll upgrade the fan. So with that in, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the CPU in. Got the 7700X. Gotta be careful here. Okay. AM5. It's nothing fancy here. We'll see how it works. I, I'm a little cautiously optimistic. Um, the ID cooling base plates in the past have, have worked quite well with some Ryzen CPUs. Here you've got direct contact heat pipe, so maybe that'll be a plus. I know the um, heat transfer is really important for these Ryzen 7000 CPUs. But we'll reserve this to the end because this is going to be a lot to work around. This board does have a, a daughter board that you can add on if you're using the USB connectors or the SATA connectors. We're not going to use any of that, so uh, that won't be something, you know, we won't need that right now. So the power button header for this board is pretty simple. You got a temp sensor, yay. Uh, which will come in handy because I do want to do a uh, custom loop with this board eventually. But this is just going to go right here. I think the cleanest way probably if we tuck this just under here. And just keep it managed that way. And I think later on we can kind of tuck this under the power supply or near it. And that will keep that in place. Take the M3 screws and just thread the put that into the standoffs. So we can just go ahead and mount that in place. So this is where you'll use those pan head screws with a rounded top. I just grabbed the power supply that was convenient. It's the 750 watt uh, Fantex Platinum here. It'll make a little more sense to mount it so the power supply can uh, take an air from the side panel. So that's what we'll do here. 
and you'll take the screws from your power supply. Same one we did the build with in the sandwich version. Okay, I'm just gonna tuck that behind there to manage it. Now we can start connecting up the board to the power supply. ATX cable here. This will go through like that. Sneak it through here. SFXL power supply will work. It's gonna be a little tight um, for the, you know, because if you have cut cables coming down into this section here, just be aware of that. Always recommend SFX. And then just one GPU cable. We'll see how the GPU fits into here shortly. All right, I've plugged in the power cable. At this point, uh, we can go ahead and install the card. You can put the cooler on first. I think because it takes a little bit of maneuvering to get the card into the hole here, it's nice not to have an obstruction here. We've also got the RAM left, but those are really easy. So getting the card in is a little bit trickier. We're gonna have to use, uh, you're gonna make sure that the prongs on the end of the hanger go through the, we'll see the two holes here, and we'll, you'll have to line that up first. So it will be a little bit tricky. First, we'll have to line up the card with the expansion slot. And at the same time, make sure you pay attention to the uh, hole on the side panel. And make sure you check it. So we'll just put a screw in here and then we'll just check it real quick. And so what you will have to check is, is right here just to make sure the cards hanger that goes through there. It's a little bit Interesting, uh, just something to watch out for. GPU is a 3060 Ti. Uh, the, this particular version of the T1 is quite strict in terms of what card will fit. So unfortunately it, it is limited to smaller two slot cards and they can't be too wide either. So this gigabyte model for 3060 Ti uh, should work fine. I did try the 3070 FE, but that uh, 12 pin connector was a little bit too fat. If we tuck these cables away nicely, it should fit no problem into the, uh, with the side panel over it. Okay. A big thanks to Noctua for sending us this gadget here. Pretty simple. It's just a plastic sleeve or sheet. And because the Ryzen 7000 CPU is kind of an interesting shape, this will prevent the thermal paste from getting into spots that we can't easily clean out later. That, see, so it kind of just sits right in place. Kind of neat. And we'll just put on a little bit of MX6 for this. Okay, this is the Chromax fan, the same one from the U9S. Uh, not to U9S. You want to make sure it's sitting flush because otherwise the it'll impede the case panel. Unfortunately, with the location of this, uh, the GP's power cable, this guy, the, the side brace, it's not, it's not going to go in here easily. So I'm going to skip this. Unfortunately, that means the fan won't mount up as nicely but let's just see how it works. Assuming you didn't have this issue, you could put this brace here. And I think with the bottom panel in place and the top panel in place, there's gonna be enough structural integrity to keep it from flexing. Uh, but let's, uh, let's just take a look. We can still mount up the side panel, just to give an idea. Normally, you would secure this to that brace but we're not, we can't do that right now. So we will just secure it at two points. This is where that doohickey is that we put in earlier and then we'll just go secure that here. And this should be okay. I hope it's fine without the connection on that side. Fantex T30 here. Didn't have to turn it this way so the cable would reach 
board. I would have liked the logo to be visible right side up, but that's fine. All right, it's all hooked up. So this is just the same as you would do it on the sandwich. Just put the feet under the panel. Okay, this will slot in to the machined holes on the front panel. And that'll just slide closed like this. Two thumb screws and just tighten it down at the back. And we can turn it this way. It's gonna be a little tight with this connector here. So really it's it's gonna be pretty restrictive with, with what GPU you can put in on this. This will just slide right in. Okay. And you'll see it, it does touch, but it will, it'll work. Not uh, not my favorite type of fit, but uh, it's good enough to, to try it out for now. I think it's looking quite good. And uh, one of my favorite parts of these T1 builds is that it's very easy to build because you're basically building the outside of the case and there you're doing the PC build from the inside out. So both aspects kind of work together really well. The GPU with the cables, it, it pushes out on the side panel. It just about fits. There's a little tiny, tiny bulge here, but I think it's overall okay. Very stunning looking case with the tie finish. Really digging this color. And the cooling components, they should just be enough to keep it cool enough for gaming, but I will take a clinical look at it, you know, Ryzen 7000, it's gonna run hot, but uh, stay tuned. I'm also gonna leave the links for the build components down below, so please take a look. Uh, give a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching today.